All right, click the links, join channel, become a member. Check out the stuff that never makes it out of monetization limbo or check out the other other links below for a, a subscribe star and whatnot. So I don't know if you remember this lady. This is from an article a year ago. It's, it's fascinating, fascinating article because I remember reading this thought, ah, oh, this lady's just so hard to take. What is it, gaslighting when they tell you something like, you know they're lying, I know they're lying, they know they're lying, uh, like everyone in the room knows they're lying. But they're like, this isn't about this. I, I can't imagine what a, a boardroom is a discussion, like a, a frank discussion has got to be when, you know, cell phones are turned off sort of thing. And they're discussing this like they know this is a religion to them. Anyway, so she made a couple of claims. I made a video about this year ago. A couple of bizarro, bizarro claims with this this fallacy concept of if we if we reach and they did the same thing with comics. We reach out to a new audience. We'll retain the bulk of the old audience so we're reaching out to a new smaller audience um i guess pocs is probably what they mean and to think like oh well they're going to be on board with it and we're not also simultaneously going to alienate the old audience which as it works out with comic books is precisely what what they've done and is what they're doing with uh star wars and then i'm sorry beyond that beyond star wars to the marvel universe and the superhero universe probably in general and in a few years it's going to be disney like i won't say disney is over because they have so much cash they're coming in i believe from old properties but the star wars universe the marvel universe that's yeah that 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 part is over especially star wars it just doesn't connect with people in the same way so she provides a couple of quotes in this story talking about uh the the, the she hulk which you know fell off pretty pretty rapidly for obvious reasons i mean it, unwatchable like the first five minutes oh hey blonde man bad in the first five minutes of the video okay well i'm, I'm out um i mean you really gotta like could you dial it back for a, usually woke stuff would be dialed back for the first couple of episodes to get you hooked and then they introduce it it's like now the first episode of rings of power was oh hey three little blonde boys being cruel malicious monsters oh that's yeah, it sets tonally, it, not only does it change Lord of the Rings, but it sets a tone for this is what you're going to get. You're just going to get a, a bend over and take all this cultural Marxism about, you know, blonde man bad, like nonstop, just right from the start. They, they think we're going to, well, you know what it does is it weeds out the audience right off the bat. Like if you're, if you're on board after that, uh, and you know, you don't have to, you don't have to pay for this kind of stuff. If you don't want to find it online, uh, yourself a VPN, a couple of hard drives, like you never really need to, I mean, there's no reason to support Hollywood. And I'm not saying do anything, you know, you're not allowed to do in your country, but, um, well, I guess I am saying that. Um, anyway, so yeah, by all means, by all means, screw these people. Uh, but, but the thing is, even for free, it's not worth watching. Like, yeah, you can find the stuff online and you go, Oh, watch the first a little bit scan through the first episode and then kind of kind of zip through the rest i'm like oh this is not worth watching i think feel like they'd have to pay me to watch it and even then it, it's just like this is really bad i mean even for for modern these modern cultural marxist idiots like this is bad so she makes a couple points that i'm um, kind of a little bit of sand in the gear to 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 realize like they say this stuff in an echo chamber because nobody ever nobody ever raises their hand it's the meme of the guy getting tossed out the window it's like oh desantis says we're bush we're busting off to chicago and new york and the the guy goes hey why don't you take them back where they came from and he gets tossed out the window it's like it'd be the same with these group of people so she makes this bizarre bizarre i don't know what the logical fallacy is that that thing about where you, you chase a new audience you think take the old audience with you she goes um or it's, it's a purpose misconstruction of uh the market forces and i know she knows what those market forces are those market dynamics oh who is the driving force as what's the word impetus the draw say driving force because i can't pronounce that other word of uh sales she goes oh 51 percent female okay let's stop right there they're not the driving force for these shows men are the driving force and the other 50 percent they drag women to movies the reverse is not as true so you know this too because you're involved in a billion dollar corporation and the people around that table all know this your audience you're not selling harlequin uh, romance novels where the audience is going to be 99 percent female they are the ones driving the purchasing decisions that's not the case with movies in general and with star wars and marvel in specific not not a, not at all now disney streaming shows that might be a little bit different like you could have a yeah you could make a female 
like a, a female superhero romantic comedy work in the um, in the Marvel the Disney Plus streaming platform where there's less in economic investment for the shows for sure you can make that work but you can't also make um men bad white men bad diversity you can't do all that at once if you want to make a simple what's the, the those those network shows i forget the names of them like women always have those on um not the hallmark channel it's like it's kind of those women channels where it's just like simple kind of romantic comedy type of type of like low budget movies that are all kind of like eh, kind of they're easy to watch you know what i'm saying uh kind of a lever to beaver kind of it's 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 easy to watch like they're not like they're well done for what they are um I, it's kind of like the hallmark channel but it's like it's one of those associated type of channels you, you you can do something like that but you can't like hit on every woke point of this oh we got a diverse friend group and we're we're fighting and we're, we're talking about environmentalism and the second you can't do all that kind of stuff you gotta leave. You gotta just pick your battles, and the battle is: oh, we're gonna have a, a woman's kind of romantic comedy type of show. We're gonna leave the, all these other cultural points out of it, and you got someone like this, and that's impossible. You're asking, you're asking a crocodile to have empathy, or, or or to it's a bridge too far for the crocodile doing calculus. They cannot, they cannot let it go. They cannot just do what I just said. Just make a harlequin romance type of book on on a movie on, on a Disney streaming platform they sit around the boardroom with these you know these woke feminist types and um you would have it, 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 you would have to have someone say what i just said and, and be like yeah we actually want to make money on this so we're gonna we're gonna give um you know 20 to 40 something year old women what they want do they want kind of like ally McBeal romantic comedy yeah we're just gonna give them that we're not gonna give lectures on the environment or second second amendment or electric cars or foreign policy we're, we, we're gonna skip all it's just gonna be romantic comedy oh Okay, yeah, and if you want to continue to work on the show, great. If not, there's other opportunities within the company. You don't have to, you can go work on other diverse shows that we like. Yeah, but on this show, you're going to get a piece of the back end where if the sales are good, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get a percentage of that. And suddenly everyone will be on board, like, because they know, like, you know, you can make a cash cow if you just give, give women what they want. Sounds a little bit naughty, but you know what I mean? Like, give the customer what they want, ultimately. Guys want a predator commando type of thing. Uh, so if you give them that, you're probably gonna you're probably gonna get a good return on investment. And women want romantic comedies, or romantic dramas. And and you, Ally McBeal, they want Ally McBeal. And you want to use CGI to make a Hulk? Uh, okay, fine. But you have to give them fundamentally Ally McBeal. This is this, <laughs> sir. You ask the impossible. So no, women are usually not the driving force. And then 30% uh, of the audience is Hispanic. Fair enough. Are they the driving force for the shows? Probably not, because they would rather watch Spanish language shows that are all in Spanish. Probably, I think you had a better chance of winning them over than you do, or at least Hispanic men, black men, white men, than you ever would. Like winning over men in general is going to be fine, because something like Predator Commando type of action adventure, you don't even have to speak the language to watch that that type of show. So those are like men and women are very vastly different audiences. So her concept is she's going to essentially make this this harlequin coat of many colors sort of thing to try to uh, suit everybody. It's like ah, that doesn't work. And then she I mean she falls up like with one asinine point that she knows is not in accord with reality after another. You know if, if it makes money why not make it? It's like well did the old did do you think the old movies made more money than than the new movies? Um is that is that what like it, it doesn't it seem like the new stuff doesn't it doesn't quite do as well then she raises these two other asinine points which are these straw man arguments that you just you just want to laugh at it's because um longest time we heard a woman-led film was never going to hit really big uh Thelma and louise uh and so it's like that's a straw man argument because people didn't say that and the thing is i like i'm not a movie buff and i automatically i'm thinking of like sigourney weaver but anyway, okay, so Captain Marvel. So, yeah, your argument doesn't make sense. The thing is, I know you know these movies. Like, I, I, like I know you know there's female-led... So, Courtney Weaver and Aliens is a huge, huge, um, huge thing. But Captain Marvel, it's like, it made a lot of money. So, she makes a straw man argument. It's like, there's the history of women, women movies. They didn't make a billion dollars. But Captain Marvel was between the two biggest movies in film his, history. Uh, the Avengers, those were three to four hundred million dollar movies that also did billions of dollars. Captain Marvel did a billion dollar for only that reason. It was between the two biggest films 
I think will that have will ever be produced for the next twenty years until America kind of figures out what it is, what it wants to be, and and it might be the that might be like those movies might literally go back and down in American history until let down until the Civil War, Civil War Part Two. Um, so that's a little bit of a straw man, but that's the reason it made money. And then they say Black Panther was never going to open, and nobody wanted a completely black cast. Nobody said that. And for for Captain Marvel, I would have said, yeah, you have a harder sell selling um, a woman movie um, for like Captain Marvel. But if it wasn't, if it came before or after Avengers, you know, we all know it wouldn't do a billion dollars. It would do okay, but like Rue Larson doesn't have that kind of draw to her. Black Panther was always going to do fine. Nobody told you. Nobody who knows anything about movies was was telling you that it was never going to be a big hit. That's a straw man argument that you don't even believe yourself, but you say it and it, it makes you feel better. Black Panther 2, will it do as well? Yeah, probably will. I mean, you're, you're selling to the same audience, you're selling to the same points. So yeah, it'll, it'll probably even beat it, um, if anything, because it really hasn't been something in between that just went after that market demographic. So yeah, it probably will hit. We'll probably will even beat it just domestically. Um, but like these are these are just lame old straw man arguments, but you're trying to conflate all this type of stuff to say like, oh yeah, these these Disney Disney streaming shows, they're gonna hit really big because Captain Marvel, you know, and Black Panther. It's like theirs are different things. What happened was um She Hulk Attorney Law premiere it uh, failed to hit the top ten. Uh, it's not doing too well and that's her her business strategy is uh make something allegedly for everyone, uh except it's it's really not no, it you, like this is this is surface level movies where you make, I mean, like a child, a child, which I mean, which m most feminists are, they're you know adult bodies with childlike brains, to think, oh, uh, so She Hulk can do everything better than Hulk, and he doesn't have any troubles or strife, uh, except you know, uh, there's a whole there's you know fifty years of comic books that show how uh, how troubled his life was. Like there's a 50 year history of those Marvel comics. I've read them all. They're they're great, and I've read the offshoots too. And in 2015, I went back and I read for some reason all the old Hulk. I love Vegas Hulk, um, Gray Hulk, I think. Um, yeah, they changed their colors because the like the printing process. Gray Hulk didn't pop off the color for, off the page for some reason. I'm like, yeah, obviously when you only get four colors, it's not gonna. So uh, he actually had a. Um, he actually hated his life. It was like a, a living hell. He was doomed to walk the earth, this living hell. Even if you watch the 80s TV show, it's like that sad Hulk walk away music. Yeah, he, he mostly hated his life except for that Vegas period. It was a miserable, miserable character. Uh, if he could have ended it all, he absolutely would have. In fact, the movies even covered that that concept of spitting out a bullet because he, he can't uh, he can't delete himself. So it's like he's stuck to this living hell. He'd have to drop into the heart of a star or something. Um so she gave him a lecture on uh, how her life is worse than his. So he's got this 50-year comic book history and then a, a half a dozen movies that told the audience how hard his life was. To the point of he tried to delete himself um, through various methods. Like just a living hell. He didn't. He did not want the curse of being the gamma radiation. Um, so that, that lecture on feminism is coming from someone who's never read the comics, which... There's not that many Hulk comics. You could read them in, in I don't know, a few days or something. And they're a, a friggin' amazing. It's amazing how they kept Hulk fresh when it's like kind of the same story. But it's like they managed to keep it fresh. I, I read it as an adult five, six years ago. It was, it was, it was amazing. And I even like the offshoots with, you know, with Deadpool and, and stuff. When there was like Hulk pull. That was very funny. So um, like you're telling me you didn't read the comics. And apparently you didn't even watch the movies these billion dollar movies because you so wanted to grind this straw man axe about feminism that you gave us a lecture on the Hulk's character that wasn't in accord with the Hulk's character. And all it would, if you wanted to, to exchange expectations, the Hulk could have just reminded her about that and like put her in her place and it would have pulled the rug out of everybody in the room. It would have been a funny scene, but it also would have been a, um, a pretty poignant pulling the wind out of somebody's sails who got a bit beyond themselves to think like, Oh, poor me, poor me. And he would, uh, you know, it, it, like if you had a, the thought bubble over his head, he's imagining all the times, like he's walking alone by himself, just miserable with an army after him, just constant thinking of, of self deleting, like 
just that would have been a funny, funny scene. But that requires depth and nuance. That you know, even me, not an expert in, in comics by any mean, can tell you that tell you like, oh yeah, that would have been a great way to write that scene. It would have been so easy. Or it, it's like it would have, you would have belt her up, and that would have subverted expectation. You belt her up for this big feminist movement. And then suddenly you just pull the rug out from under her and it's like, it would have been a subtle scene. It would have presented both sides of an argument. And you're not discounting everything, the concept of feminism, you're discounting this one woman's, um, the way she, she uses it as a shield when she didn't, she, she didn't use it correctly. It's like, that would have been a killer scene. It would have been funny, but it also would have been a real scene. And I, I just thought out of the top of my head, it's like, you know, it would have been better than what they wrote. So like, why didn't you get some some fat neck beard YouTube nerd out there who, who could have helped you. Oh, cause we needed women. So, yeah, I mean, really it's like, it's not that hard to find an attorney who's also a comic book fan to uh, give you a little bit of trial um, procedure, you know, a little civil procedure one-on-one, your first trial. It was literally a book called your first trial to tell you, tell you the actual in court procedural aspects of civil procedure. Uh, no, no, we didn't actually hire any experts. So like not any legal experts and not any comic experts. That's weird. Yeah, that is weird. And you chose... You could have maybe... I don't know. Maybe done something differently that wouldn't wouldn't have been stupid. Try that next time. Like, no, they're not going to... They're women and they have this... Like, that's the shield. Is Oh, we're women and we're woke. And we're going to like do all this cultural Marxist nonsense. If it sells, if there's mo- leaving money on the table. Yeah, you're, you're leaving money on the table. All right. Anyway... Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next episode.